In this episode of Software Sunday published on a Thursday, I'm going to show you how to set up a simple web server in under 5 minutes. This tutorial isn't going to cover anything fancy like optimizing security or setting up a custom domain name. Today, I'm just going to show you how to make a simple HTML page accessible to the outside world via your IP address. Now, the first thing you need to do is find a computer to use as your web server. Any x86 machine made before 2007 should fit the bill. Alternatively, you could also run the server on the computer you're currently using. Next, we need to pick an operating system. And I'm about to make a lot of people angry because if you actually want to host a long-term website, you should really be using some sort of Linux distro. However, for this video, we will be using Windows, and to make matters worse, Windows 10. With your bare metal fired up and ready to go, next we need to get our hands on the WAMP software stack. So Google WAMP, that's W-A-M-P, click on the first site that comes up, which is WAMPserver.com, scroll down to the download section and download whichever version uh, is appropriate for your CPU's architecture. It's gonna take you to the SourceForge page, and you're gonna click the green download button. That's gonna to download to wherever your uh, specified downloads directory is. Uh, mine is actually downloads in my file system, so I'm gonna navigate over there once it has finished downloading and double click on the installation executable. And you guys know how this goes. Click through all the prompts, accept all the agreements. You can customize some of the parameters if you want. I'm leaving all of those default for the sake of this tutorial. At the end of the installation process, it's also gonna prompt you if you want to change the default WAMP browser. I changed mine to Chrome Chrome just for the heck of it, but you don't have to do that. Also, at this point, you're going to need to give it access through the Windows Defender firewall. We're not going to fire up WAMP just yet. We have a little bit of network configuration to do first. So open up command prompt and type in ipconfig slash all. Uh, this is going to give us some necessary network info. And then after that, we want to open up the control panel, go to network and internet, network and sharing center, change adapter settings, and now you guys are going to have to bear with me for a second because I'm about to tell you something scary, something that some people might find absolutely terrifying. So all of the network engineers and system admins out there, cover your ears right now because what I'm about to tell you is that you can, not that you should, but you can, if you have no other option, host a web server through Wi-Fi. Shut and yes, there are situations like that where you cannot use Ethernet. I was in one of those situations a while ago. I lived in a house that was not wired up with Ethernet. So I had to host the server through Wi-Fi. And while it was painful, it did work. So if you want to use Wi-Fi instead of Ethernet, in the next step, instead of right-clicking on the Ethernet adapter, you are going to right click on the Wi-Fi adapter and it is the exact same process from there on out. So anyway, back to the tutorial, open up the properties for your adapter, double click on internet protocol version four, and now we need to set a static IP address. So click on use the following IP address and copy over all of the information that we got from the IP config slash all command in the command prompt to the corresponding fields in the internet protocol version four properties. So exactly what I'm doing on screen. Of course, your values are going to be different depending on uh, the info that you got from the IP config slash all command, but it's the exact same process. Since I've been flying through this video, there are a couple things I want to touch on. First off, this process is going to be valid for Windows XP and up. Second off, I would really recommend taking some time to read up on WAMP because it is an incredibly capable and extremely convenient software stack. With that out of the way, I am going to talk about a case where diversity is bad. <laughs> And no, I'm not talking about when it comes to people. I'm talking about when it comes to routers. Next, we need to configure port forwarding. And FYI, that process is going to be a little different for every router. So what I'm going to do next in my router's portal is going to be similar to what you are going to have to do. However, do realize there will be some discrepancies between uh, the process I take to open the ports on my router and the process that you are going to have to take to open the ports on your router. You can access your router's portal by entering the default gateway found in the IP config information into your browser's address bar. From here, go ahead and log into your router, and the setting for port forwarding on my router is found under advanced, NAT forwarding, and virtual servers. Once again, on your router, it could be found somewhere else, and it might be called something different. Go ahead and click add. 
For service type, I'm going to uh, call this demo server. It doesn't really matter, it's just a name. External port, I'm gonna set that to 150 because it hasn't been used by anything yet. For the internal IP, you're gonna set that to the static IP that we specified earlier. So 192.168.0.182 and go ahead and save it. Now the default port for HTTP traffic is actually 80, but chances are if you have consumer internet, that port is going to be blocked by your internet service provider so you won't be able to use it. That's actually why you will notice that our archive site is actually hosted on port 100. And in this case, that's why we are using port 150. If you were able to get port forwarding working on your router, then it should be smooth sailing from here on out. There is one more thing we need to do before we can start WAMP up, and that is make some customizations to the Apache HTTPD configuration file, uh, which can be found under the path you can see on your screen if you didn't change the default install location. So go ahead and open up that configuration file with your preferred text editor. I am using uh, Notepad++ right here. You're gonna scroll down to line 68 and change the IP address to the static IP address we uh, set on the server and change the port to 150. On line 69, change the port to 150 or whichever port you specified, but I'm just assuming that you specified 150. Go down to line 246. You're gonna to wanna to change that line to require all granted, and then scroll down again. Last line we have to change, 289 change that to require all granted as well. Congratulations, you are pretty much done. You can go ahead and fire up WAMP server. The uh, icon in the taskbar should turn green. Now you can navigate to your IP address. Uh, just look up what's my IP address in Google, put that into your browser followed by the port number. And if you want to test to see if the website is accessible from an external source, you can do that by using your cell phone and the cell phone's uh, mobile network. Now, I'm going to show you how to actually put your own web page onto this WAMP server and make it accessible from outside your network. So go ahead and uh, code up a really rough uh, HTML page, I have an example up right in front of you, and then navigate to your uh, WAMP directory, go to the www directory, delete everything in there, and take the simple HTML file that we created earlier and place it into the www directory. And if you refresh the web page, you will see that it updated and it is now hosting your simple website. That is going to be about it for this video. There is one more thing I want to mention, and that is the fact that if you are using consumer internet, and chances are you probably are, you probably have a dynamic IP address. And unfortunately, that means that after a couple days, your IP address is going to change and you won't be able to access your site from that IP address anymore. You have to access it from the new IP address. So it is still possible to host a website within your network, with, with a dynamic IP address, and I know this because that's exactly what I do. There are services out there that will allow you to do that. I'm not gonna talk about that in this video. If you want me to mention one, uh, DYNDNS actually has a, a really great service um, for getting around that. That's the one that I actually use. So if you're interested in that, um, that's something you could look into. Not something I'm going to address in this video. If you guys are interested in, uh, in actually going a step further and want me to uh, talk about that, like adding a domain name to your site and getting around the uh, dynamic DNS issue, let me know in the comments section and it could possibly be a future video if there is the demand for it. Once again, guys, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next installment of A Computers and Technology.